but my inbox is flooded with messages from people saying, oh, so-and-so taught me this, but when I went to go list my bundle, I got this error message and now Amazon suspended me because I did this or this or this. It's because so-and-so told you to break the rules and you didn't know any better. Hey, hey everyone, welcome to this week's episode of The Amazon Files brought to you by Mommy Income. I am your host, Kristen Ostrander, and I'm just gonna be upfront and real with you. Um, we are gonna talk some dirt today. We are gonna talk about some things that have been going on in the Amazon the world. There's some shade being thrown at some certain things, uh, talking about bundles, talking about some of these other things, and we're just going to clear the air about it. I'm even gonna skip my regular announcements. Y'all know you can go to mommyincome.com anytime you want and look at upcoming events, like um, the work workshops that we have coming up, a couple of virtual events, some in-person events. I'm not even gonna go there now. I'm just so frustrated with what's going on and we want to be able to talk about these things. So mommyincome.com slash workshop if you want to know about upcoming events. If so, um, if not, go to mommyincome.com. Also, if you are not in our Facebook group, we have a free Facebook group that you can join in the Facebook group um, with a code word. Why do we use a code word? We use a code word so that we don't get crazy spammers. You don't get a lot of ads. You don't get a lot of any of that stuff. None of it, really, because we don't allow it. We don't allow spammers and people to come in and just say whatever they want. Um, you have to be qualified to come in and qualification really just means that you've listened to some content here at Mommy Income and the Amazon Files. You enjoy the content. You're an Amazon seller or want to be and you want good quality information. This is why we, we reduce the size of our Facebook group. It is free to join, but you need this code word. Your code word for today is success. Okay, that's your code word. And you're going to need that when you get into the Facebook group, mommyincome.com slash join us so that you can join the Facebook group and ask all of your questions and get the necessary help you need. Look, we're not here to monopolize all of your time and make sure that you're hanging out in a social media Facebook group. No, we're here to grow business. And if you're wanting to grow your business or start your business on Amazon, this is the place to be to come ask questions. Why? So that you can get back to work doing what you need to do, which is making money. That's why we're in business. We're in business so that we can um, do better for ourselves. So you can have freedom and flexibility and uh, financial security and things like that. And this is what we do. We grow our businesses. And because of that, that's why you're here. And you want to go to the Facebook group, mommyincome.com slash join us. Use the code word hashtag success. And that's what you want to do. So here is what we're going to talk about today. Today is about truth. It's about this episode is clearing the air about bundles, what bundles truly are, why they work and why my me and my students have had extreme success with bundlings and how to execute them properly can bring tremendous success to your business. But notice how I said execute properly. So there's been some chatter, recent some recent activities in some Amazon circles, whether you follow a lot of Facebook groups or you're you're online or you're listening to different summits and you know the different things like that. Usually those are awesome. So anytime you have a chance to go to get some education other places, but let's be real. Not everyone teaches proper concepts to follow all of the rules, that follow the rules on Amazon, that follow the rules here and there. A lot of people are like, well, I'm making a lot of money with this. Well, so are drug dealers and they're still doing something that's illegal and wrong. So just because somebody's making money and making success at something does not mean they're doing it correctly, properly, above board, and without crazy black hat strategies. So let me just Let's just be honest about that. There are people out there that are swindling, that are lying, that are teaching concepts that are that could get you all kicked off of Amazon in a minute. So I want you to just go into every training, including mine, including mine. Go into trainings, go into education with one eye open and one ear open to just double checking and cross checking, you know? If you want to know the truth about drop shipping, go to Amazon Seller Central, log in and type in the word drop shipping into Amazon, not the seller forums. That's just people chatting. I'm talking about Amazon's policies and rules. So go to the help section, type in drop shipping and do not do, do not look at seller forums. Instead, look at Amazon's actual policies on drop shipping. That's where you learn what's allowed and what's not allowed. 
And if you don't know, don't ask Amazon because they don't know their ear from their elbow either. But the reality is always cross check what you're learning to make sure that it aligns with Amazon's rules and regulations. Because guess what? Jim Bob over here in another Facebook group who says this is allowed isn't an expert. He's just working on maybe his own experience or um, something he's learned from somebody that told somebody that told somebody, right? You guys, rumors, miscommunications, misunderstandings, false teaching. It's everywhere. You have got to be your own best advocate to look up this stuff and make sure that someone is not leading you astray by simply trying to make a dollar off of you and not teaching you the correct thing. So if they're not talking about Amazon policy and linking to it or showing it, then you better double check yourself. The only reason I'm, I'm, I'm bringing this episode today is for your benefit because so my inbox is flooded. I mean, you guys should see my inbox. It's insane. But my inbox is flooded with messages from people saying, oh, so-and-so taught me this, but when I went to go list my bundle, I got this error message and now Amazon suspended me because I did this or this or this. It's because so-and-so told you to break the rules and you didn't know any better. And that was sad, but now we're, we're talking about the rules. So I, I'm not show, throwing shade at any one person. You will never hear me do that. You're never gonna hear me call names and, and, and say those things. All I want you to do is be aware that there are people out there that are tr teaching the wrong things when it comes specifically to bundling, when it comes to drop shipping, when it comes to some of these concepts that you are and aren't allowed to do, this is something here. So right here, right now, we are going to clear the air about some of the misconceptions about bundling. And of course, I can't teach my entire wholesale bundle system in this, you know, 30 to 45 minute podcast. That's why I have a wholesale bundle system so that you can learn all the rules and all the things properly and in a con concise, clear order. There is six modules of step-by-step -step video training, including transcripts, intrude, including what five other additional trainings that go in with this, including talking about branding and brand approval and G10 exemptions and how to list your bundle. Yeah, that is... It, that should be in every training. If someone doesn't teach you how to list your bundle and they just teach you how to like put bundle ideas together, well, that's great. We can all do that. But if you don't know how to list it, what good does it do you? So you really want to pay attention to these things. So we're going to clear the air about what bundles are, what they are not, what is a, a decent bundle, what is not such a decent bundle, and going through all this. Now, because this is a podcast, you can't actually see um, these examples, but I plan on making a video soon that you can see some of the examples of kind of good, the good, the bad, and the ugly about some bundling. And if you're in the bundle course in the wholesale bundle system, then if you're in the wholesale bundle system, then you're already going to get tons of examples of good bundles and bad bundles and why we do this and why we don't do that. It's all included in the system. Okay, so let's talk specifically about what bundles are. Bundles are highly complementary items put packaged together in a convenient way. In other words, all the products go in one. This is not a virtual bundle that Amazon's suggesting and that you're selling individual products in a virtual bundle. And we can talk about vo virtual bundles and why I don't think they work in uh, a little bit later in the show. But for now, we're talking about you're, you are creating a bundle. What is it? It, it brings value to the customer that is the one thing that most people that a lot of people are missing right now when it comes to bundling most people come to bundles because they're frustrated with straight up wholesale their private label product isn't selling the way that they wanted to regular wholesale is getting really really complicated and or saturated and it's harder and harder to find products with margin and um, retail arbitrage and online arbitrage is can be profitable but very much of a pain and you're running around from store to store trying to collect all the good stuff and you're running out or other people People are tanking your price and hijacking your listing. All these problems are very real. And that's one of the re these are many reasons why people turn to bundling. They turn to bundling because all of these other business models either are not sustainable or they require a lot of administration and a lot of stuff to do and, and a lot of volume in order to actually make decent process. Pro excuse me. In order to make decent profit, it takes a lot of admin work or a lot of pounding the pavement, like, you know, going out to store to store, things like that. So bundles 
should be created in a way though, this is what's different from other things, is that most people when they're buying products to resell, they are not thinking at all really about their customer. They're thinking about how many people are selling this, what's the supply and demand, what's the sales rank, how much profit am I gonna make on it, what's my ROI, all that kind of stuff. And I'm not saying those things aren't important, they are important. But when you're creating a bundle, the very first question you should ask yourself is, what is the value I'm bringing to my customer? Not what is the ROI, not what is the sales rank, not what is the brand name, not any of that stuff. It's what is the value that I am bringing to my customer with this bundle? This is not, this is what, what, what bundles are not. Bundles are not a way to get people off of your listing, although that's something that if you create a good bundle, that will happen naturally. If you do it correctly, you you won't have competition on your listings. That's what I teach you. But it's not just a way to be like, I'm tired of people hijacking my listing, so I'm just going to add something random to the products I'm already selling so that no one else can sell them. That is not thinking about the customer. That's thinking about yourself. That's thinking about your bottom line and not thinking about the customer. But did you know that if you think about your customer first and think about enhancing their experience and helping their experience go better, they will come back to you and buy from you specifically because you treated them so well, because you had their best interest in mind, not just your bottom line? Think about it. Think about the stores that you have been to. We all still go to stores, right? I mean, yeah, I know it was pandemic times and so many of us stayed out of stores for so long, but as we're emerging back into real life, we're going into stores. We're rediscovering these new businesses or old businesses or places that we go and do business. So even think about your local coffee shop. Say there's a local mom and pop shop right next to Starbucks. And yeah, we all know how much everyone loves Starbucks, right? It is a household name. You live under a rock if you've never heard of Starbucks, right? But if someone says, you know, Joe and Joe's coffee shop over here um, is across the street from Starbucks and their line is out the door and wrapped around the building just like Starbucks, yet no one's ever really heard of them except for this local time, the, this local place. You know, it's not global. It's not worldwide name like Starbucks, but yet they are profiting more than Starbucks. Starbucks on a regular basis. Why? Because they know their customers. They listen to their customers. And when their customers say, we don't want our, our we don't want foo-foo fluffy names for our coffee. We want small, medium, large. We want it to say exactly what it is. If it's white chocolate mocha, that's what it is. Or if it's this and that, they only do coffee. They write, they, they know their customers. They ask their customers for surveys. They give their customers coupons and lo loyalty discounts. And you know what? Those people go to that store more than this. They also treat their employees really well and pay them well. All this to say that it does matter how you treat your customer, even if you don't meet them personally. They understand, as a consumer, you understand when someone's put time, effort, and energy into something upfront in order to create a great experience for you as a buyer. You remember that. If a store clerk remembers your name the next time you come in, you're going to remember that. This is exactly what we need to do with our Amazon customers, even though we'll never meet them, even though we have no idea who they are and who's actually buying that item. We can give some time and thought to thinking about the bundle we're putting together. And it's not about you. It's not about your profit or your bottom line first. It's about your customer first. So when you're creating a bundle, you here's what here's here's an example. Like I don't have a visual example for you, obviously, because this is a podcast, but if you create a bathroom towel set, okay, two bath towels, two hand towels, two washcloths, you're going to see this all over Amazon, right? They're in every color, every style, every thickness, every variety from like cheap Walmart versions all the way to like bougie hotel spa type towels, whatever. And you're going to see that. But what is a good bundle versus not a good bundle? First of all, a good bundle is the two bathroom towels, the two hand towels, two washcloths, great bundle even by itself. You don't need to enhance it with anything else. But I also can see someone added um, their branded coffee mug to their towels and their washcloths and their, their um, hand towels. So you get this wonderful towel set and then you get this coffee mug that says, you know, Joe Schmo's coffee mug, right? That's so that no one else can copy their listing. That is why those people did that. 
They're not just trying to give you, and they say in the name of, this is a free gift. This is a free gift to you with purchase. Well, first of all, you're not supposed to, you're not allowed to really add free gifts to anything. But you can add a bonus. You can always add things to your package. But Amazon doesn't want you to offer free bonuses and like all these different things. This is not a marketing webinar. This is a product listing on Amazon. So tell me how, if somebody in the back, someone way in the back can raise their hand and tell me how a branded coffee mug, it doesn't say anything cute. It just says, you know, such and such spa services. That's what it says. It's like they're advertising, except they're giving you it on a coffee mug. So that's allowed on Amazon because your advertisement is on a coffee mug. So they can put, you know, spa services.com, whatever it is, along with their spa towels. And they think they're enhancing the brand services. But guess what? I'm buying bathroom towels for my bathroom that I just remodeled and updated and I don't want your coffee mug and that does not enhance my experience. As a matter of fact, it gets it gets on my nerves. I don't want your, your coffee mug with, so you have to, those are the types of things I'm talking about. You have to think about your customer and think about them first, not just, oh, okay, I wanna keep hijackers off of my listing, so I'm just gonna throw this random thing in here, and because it's branded, I get brand approval, and because it's branded, no one else is gonna jump on my listing. Well, are those things true? Yes. But the question is, who is more likely to buy your bundle when it comes to those types of things? Almost a better, a, maybe a better user experience instead of your branded coffee mug with your, you know, spa services logo on it would be a how to create longevity for your towels, how to wash them and care for them in a way that they will last for years to come. And it's a little cheat sheet card uh, this big that's maybe laminated and it says, you know, after each use or after use, you know, wash them on delicate, make sure you use, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Like downy or something like that to, to kind of enhance the user experience. How to properly s remove stains from these type of towels. What, how to wash them, how to care for them, whatever it is. Even a, a folding towel tutorial. Like, I don't know, something that would really enhance the usership of the products you're selling. But a coffee mug with your brand on it does not enhance the way that we use bathroom towels. So you really have to think about your customer before you start thinking about A, your bottom line, and B, um, how is it going to be best for you as a seller? Because people have come to me, showed me their bundles and say, I followed all the research process and all this kind of stuff. And why isn't my listing selling? Why isn't this item selling? All the keywords are great. All this is great. All this stuff is great. I have great margin built in. Why isn't someone buying my bundle? And I'm here to tell you, they're not buying your bundle because they could care less about your branded coffee mug. They just want the towels. So give them something else with the towels that helps them either use the towels or um, enhance their experience in some sort of way. I mean, are towels gifted often? Well, maybe for like bridal showers or wedding showers or something like that. But are they really gifted as like a birthday gift? Here's some bathroom towels? Probably not. So I wouldn't suggest like a gift box for that, but maybe a, um, a care a care kit or something that is like helps you enhance the use and the longevity of your towels. I don't know. Um, I mean, I'm not here to create your bundle for you in this moment, but this is like the feedback that I get when people don't understand this stuff. So I'm not throwing anyone under the bus here. I'm using these examples to hopefully help all of you listeners figure out how to create your bundles in a way that's not about you. It's about your customer. So here, an, another example of a, a good bundle that actually enhances and helps the customer use the, use the products that are sold are, um, I saw someone selling canned cat food. Anybody here have cats? We have three cats, okay? And our cats are spoiled and yes, they eat wet food. So we feed the cats twice a day with wet food, but they don't often eat the whole can that we're using. So we sometimes have the leftovers in the can. And guess what we normally do with the canned cat food, which is, this is something I absolutely hate, but we do it, is that the canned cat food, we put it in a baggie and put it in the fridge and wait for the next day or the next time we're going to mix it with dry food, whatever it is. So we have this canned cat food and we put it in the fridge. Problem is, 
it smells. It's usually we're, we're using baggies, which we like to recycle and we don't want to use that. But then do I really want to wash a whole dish by putting it in a Tupperware? You know, those types of things. Right. And then I saw this bundle on Amazon where somebody is selling this this case pack of these variety of cat food. And then they are selling these cat food canned lids that go right on the exact cans that I'm buying. And it's like a seal tight lid and it's got a cute little cat on the top of it. And that's their brand. So their brand is, you know, we'll call it, I mean, for the sake of propriety, I won't tell you like their actual brand, but it's like, it says, you know, cute cat, cute cat cans or something like that. And it's got a cat on it. And these canned cat food lids fit exactly on that half a can. And I can put that can in the fridge and it seals and it doesn't leak and it doesn't seem to smell and it enhances the product. And it comes with, I think, two canned cat food lids, which is perfect for us. But some people have three, some people have more. So they're selling that with the cat food. Now, this I feel like would be a great addition. The only problem I have with the bundle is that do I need those canned cat food lids every single time I buy cat food? Because y'all, we have three cats. We buy a lot of cat food. Do I need those lids every time? Well, actually, come to find out, a couple of them have been accidentally thrown, thrown away. Sometimes we need extra. So do I need all of them? They're starting to pile up. Yes, yeah, so I've stopped buying that bundle and actually buy just a regular canned cat food now, which is what something that although I loved it in the beginning, now I have two or three or four or six um, of these canned cat food lids and I don't need all of them all the time. So now I'm going back to just buying the variety pack of the canned cat food without the lids. However, I still think that was a great idea in the beginning because that actually enhances my usership of the canned cat food that I buy. Someone thought about me as the customer and they said oh what do people need with these canned cat food sometimes you don't use all of it all at once and you put it in the fridge to keep it from spoiling and these lids would be perfect so somebody somewhere number one invented that yay you and then they they sold it in that bundle so aside from that being a replenishable with a non-replenishable which we'll talk about in a minute um that's a really great example as opposed to like the bath towels that had the coffee mug that no one cares about and no one needs and no one uses and it doesn't even go together and you know all that kind of stuff so bundles should be created in a way that brings value to the buyer and throwing any old thing in there with your brand name on it or just throwing a bag in there or something like that is not bringing value to the customer Bringing value is enhancing their user experience, making it memorable, making it more convenient, making it easier, something that's adding value to them. Not as a way to get around the rules, to get around product restrictions, to get around brand restrictions, to get away from hijackers, to just try to sell more product outside of that. Because anybody who tries that doesn't succeed for long. They just don't. They don't realize that that's, you know, that they're not thinking about the customer. They're only thinking about how do I kick everybody off my listing? That's what they're thinking about. Just be honest with yourself. Have you thought about that? Have you thought about the only reason why you want to do bundles is because you're doing really well with the retail ar arbitrage, like replenishable, and you want to figure out a way to get all the sales instead of sharing the buy box? Huh? Have you done that before and thought, oh my gosh, what can I just throw in here so that no one else can copy me? Because guess what? They'll, they'll eventually copy or they'll make their other listing and then you have 14 listings of the same thing and they all come with some different variety of somebody's coffee mug or sticky notes or something that you see there that doesn't enhance the user experience. But the ones that are long-term sustainable and successful are the ones that think about the customer and what the customer wants and needs. It's all about the customer. It's not about you. Sorry, hate to break it to you. I'm the one telling you right now. It's not about you. It's about your customer. But it will eventually be about you and your product and your profit and your bottom line if you do it correctly. So you need to stop thinking about yourself and think about the person buying the item. And just ask yourself this. If you have bundles out there that are active right now that maybe are not selling or you've created some bundles and they haven't sold at all and you've kind of abandoned the idea or you're struggling to even come up with one, asking the question of how does your bundle stand out? How will it or how does it stand out among the rest in terms of adding value and creating a good product experience for your customer? Just ask yourself that and then answer it as if it's an essay question or a survey question. Someone someone comes point blank to you and says, 
How does your item stand out among the rest? Why is it better? Why should someone buy from you and buy from your listing and buy your product versus whatever else is out there? Why should they buy your bundle instead of adding the bundle components you have to the cart? What did you do to make it easier, faster, more convenient, and add variety to them that they would say, yes, thank you, add to cart, buy now? Answer the question. Because if you created your bundle just to get hijackers off of your listing and you randomly added something there that doesn't bring value to the customer, it's not going to go well. Here's an, I'm going to give you another example of a bundle question slash dilemma that someone had. And this is like the, the example of great idea, wrong product. Let's try to figure this out. Okay, so um, client comes and says, well, I'd like to, I, I have a pasta roni three pack. I've been selling pasta roni and I have a three pack and I'm thinking about adding my branded wooden spoon to the pasta roni three pack. The customer loves pasta roni and they wants to buy it in multiples because maybe they cook it every night. I don't know. The seller creates a three pack of pasta roni and adds a branded wooden spoon to keep the competition away and wonders why it's not selling. Question is, if you eat enough pasta roni to buy it on a weekly basis, do you want to purchase a wooden spoon with that every single time you buy it? If you're buying it weekly, you would end up with 52 wooden spoons at the end of the year. So although wooden spoons to stir your pasta roni and pasta roni multi-pack kind of thing go well together, yeah, they're used together. Um, that would make it convenient to stir and use all of your product there. But as a customer, would you want to buy a wooden spoon with your pasta roni every single week when you go to the grocery store? Would you actually do that? So are people doing that on Amazon? Probably not. That does not enhance their experience. It doesn't help them to like or not like pasta roni any better and want to come back and shop from you. As a matter of fact, maybe the first time it's cute and then the second time they're like, oh, well, do what I did and go back and buy the items like with the cat food without the lids because although that's a great idea in the beginning, it's not replenishable. Eventually, if so you're not going to have repeat customers coming back and buying the same bundle over and over again with your replenishable because they don't want your wooden spoon every single time. They just don't. It, it lasts. It's not disposable. So they're going to have one forever. And if they've already have one, why do they want 14? Because they're going to order it every week, right? So a better option would be to maybe create a variety pack. So say I like the pasta roni, like Alfredo or whatever, the flavor. And I'm like, oh, if I really like this and my family really likes this, maybe they are going to want another flavor of pasta roni. So maybe it's a multi-pack where there's three or four varieties of it. Or if you're anything like us with the like mac and cheese flavors or anything like that, we like to add like, um, I don't know, like different spices or like a crumble some sort of a crumble topping or seasoning or a hot sauce or something like that, that if you know of a, a pasta roni recipe that calls for some of these specialty ingredients and something like that, or we just like to put stuff over our pasta, like Parmesan cheese stuff that we put on pasta. So maybe something that's actually consumable and used together with the product that makes more sense than a wooden spoon that you have to buy over and over and over again. So always think about the customer. Always think about what would you want and ask myself, would I, if I'm buying pasta roni every week, would I want to buy, would I want a spoon to be included with that every time? My answer would be no, because number one, I don't need 52 spo spoons. And if I'm buying groceries weekly and this is something we always buy, I don't need a whole lot of extra dishes in my house. That's not going to make sense. But if you included a hot sauce with it or a ranch seasoning packet. Now, you guys, I'm making this stuff up. I'm not sitting here researching pasta roni bundles. I'm just giving you ideas of what would make the most sense to bundle with this item. And if you're selling a consumable, you don't want to give somebody a non-consumable that then they have to buy with that just to get that. They will shop somewhere else because they're like, 
I don't want this spoon every time I'm ordering stuff. So thinking about them and thinking about those types of things. If the pasta calls for another dry ingredient someplace, then maybe you can add that alongside of it because that's something that they're going to need to use in order to use the pasta roni. But we can kind of make a fair assumption that if someone's buying pasta roni, that they could also be, um, that they have a wooden spoon or a spoon somehow to stir it with. So that's probably not the best idea, but something else like some Florida flavor enhancer or seasoning packet or a variety of pasta ronis and having an extra, okay, so there's three of this kind, but here's a new kind you can try. You know, people are more willing to buy those types of things than that. So paying attention to those types of things and asking yourself those questions. When bundles are done correctly, they're extremely successful. These these are some of the things that are doing bundles correctly. I'm just, it's like, I'm going to rattle some of these off and we're going to talk about them and thinking about them. But correct bundles are successful when they have things in common. So going back to the towels and the mug situation, like towels and mugs don't go really go together. Mugs, coffee mugs can be used anywhere. Yeah. But like, you're not generally using them in the bathroom. Towels are used in the bathroom. So it would make much more sense to put something that's already used in the bathroom along with those towels rather than, oh, let's just add this branded mug, okay? So they're used together, usually in the same space or around the same time. They need to meet a need or solve a problem. That is what bundles do. They meet a need or solve a problem. What's the need? What is your customer's need? And why are they looking for this product? And we don't have to overcomplicate this. This is not a five page essay that we need to write. It's okay, I need to get a gift for Mother's Day. So I type into Amazon Mother's Day gifts. Or I might have something specific in mind like Mother's Day gifts for blonde women. <laughs> I don't know. I'm like making this stuff up too, but you guys, you gotta understand that that's how your customers are searching. They're not going into the category and picking categories and trying to sort that way. They're going to Amazon on their phone or online and their computer and they're typing in Mother's Day gifts, cheap Mother's Day gifts, expensive Mother's Day gifts, Mother's Day gifts below $50. Like these are, this is what your customers type in. So you need to reach them with your product and they have to look at the product and go, yes, this is exactly what I was looking for. This meets my needs or solves the problem that I have. So another problem could be like, I don't know, let's go back to cats. Cat hair is a nightmare. Okay, it is. Um, cats scratching furniture is a nightmare. So I'm often Googling ways to keep the cats from scratching every single thing that we bring into the house. And we did find something. It's an essential oil plus water spray that we spray on it. And we have to spray continually and it doesn't damage furniture and doesn't leave stains and all that kind of stuff. But the cats do not like the smell of this like couple of citrus and orange and peppermint oil that's all mixed together in a spray bottle. And we spray the furniture and we spray some rugs that we just got that they're trying to tear up and it actually works. So you're welcome. But that that's what I mean is that that's the problem that a lot of times people are searching for. Like, natural remedies for cat scratching. You know, those are the keywords that your customers are using and those are the problems they're trying to solve with products, okay? We're always trying to solve problems with products. That's why we sell online. That's why we're successful. That's why Amazon's successful and Walmart and all these other places. So paying attention to the need you're meeting or the problem you're solving with a product. That's exactly how to make the best bundle. Also, highly complimentary and makes sense together. Okay, just like the pasta roni and the spoon. Yes, you need a wooden spoon to stir your pasta roni. Absolutely. But do you need a new one every time you buy pasta roni? No, you don't. So if it's disposable, eh, I suppose that could kind of make sense. But then who wants to have all that waste and do all that? But if you are buying pasta roni and you always put Parmesan cheese on the top of it, then you could buy packets of Parmesan cheese, you know, like the little ones you get from Olive Garden that are just like a single serving, you know, when you get Olive Garden takeout. I don't know if you guys ever got Olive Garden takeout, um, but we have and they, they give you the little Parmesan cheese packets that you can sprinkle over your pasta or whatever else because they're assuming you're eating takeout and you might not have access to Parmesan cheese in your fridge. Okay. And they, they don't have, they have a longer shelf life because they're, I don't know, pasteurized or I don't know what it is, but 
the reality is, is that that's something that might enhance that. Or um, if we're making mac and cheese, we always put some sort of crumble on the top of it. So maybe it's a crumble packet or maybe you're making ranch mac and cheese or ranch mm. pasta roni and you want to use like a Hidden Valley Ranch packet to add and enhance the ranch flavor of this pasta, whatever it is that's used together. In the same situation, it's also replenishable together. So if someone really loves that ranch packet in there, then they're going to want to come back and buy that over and over and over again. But if it's a spoon that comes with it, the, although that might be a nice value added item, it gets annoying over time because you don't need that every time. You only need it once. So do you want a one and done customer or do you want repeat customers? Well, it depends on what you're selling. We sell a lot of home decor and we don't expect people to come back, back and buy the same exact thing. They might tell someone else about it or someone else might see it on their wall and say, oh, where'd you get that? They say Amazon. Great. But most of the time we aren't we don't have repeat customers in a sense that the same customer is not buying the same thing, but they'll come back and they'll buy other things. We have repeat customers in that way. Okay, items have to be high, yeah, highly complimentary and put and make sense together. Just because it's all used in the kitchen doesn't mean it's used together. I mean, like people use those drawer liners in their kitchen, like in their drawers so that the crumbs and everything don't get all dinged up and gross. But then they also, you also use an air fryer. So are you gonna sell air fryer success, uh, accessories with like the drawer liners for your kitchen? Well, just cause they're in the same kitchen doesn't mean they go together. So really thinking about that main question. How does my bundle, my products combine together, add value and create value for my customer? The other major thing that guys, I don't usually teach this outside of workshops, but I am just tired of people just trying to do things their own way and get around rules and get around restrictions and all that kind of stuff. The best bundles can answer who, what, when, where, why, and how of their bundle. And if you can define that for your bundle, the chances of you being successful are 10 times more than people who don't have that. Who is buying your bundle? What are they buying it for? Where are they using it? How are they using it? Are they the end user or is, are they buying it as a gift or buying it for someone else? Asking and answering these questions will help you and answer the question for yourself. If you had to submit a template to Amazon to answer these questions, how would you answer them? What value are you bringing to the table with this bundle? Because your answer can't be to keep hijackers off my listing. You're not doing it right if that's your answer. Now that can be your motivation. Absolutely can be your motivation. I started creating bundles because I was so tired of price tanking. I was so tired of finding an amazing retail arbitrage replen from the store that I was buying for six months. And then all of a sudden, there's two sellers, then four sellers, then six sellers. Now it's up to 18 sellers and none of us are making any money. Yeah, that was my motivation for creating bundles from single unit items. That was my motivation, but it's not the reason that I'm doing it for the customer. What is going to make the customer want to buy my bundle versus these single unit items together or whatever else? What is going to enhance their experience? What is going to make them want to buy my variety pack or my item versus somebody else's item? Ask yourself that question, who, what, when, where, why, and how. It's no longer about just the data, although you guys know I'm a data nerd and I love the data and I love the numbers and I want to know my ROI and I do know my ROI and I know my numbers and I know uh, the keyword research volume and I know that there's a supply and demand gap. All of these things are important. But if you can't answer the who, what, when, where, why, and how of your bundle or how it meets a need or solves a problem, throw it in the garbage because you're wasting your time. You've got to be able to think about your customer. The brands that are out there that are surviving, the brands that we all know, household names, things like that, there's a reason that we know those household names is because they have, first of all, they're billion dollar companies, but none of them started that way. Amazon started in Jeff Bezos' garage, and now it's a household name. You can't go anywhere where hard, I mean, I, I've never met a person that's never heard of Amazon, put it that way. I've never per met a person that's never heard of Walmart or Starbucks, or Nike. Why? Because these brands and companies have taken the time and energy to take care of their customers, listening to their customers, understanding what their customers want and need. Walmart is cheap. 
let's just be honest, Walmart is like the cheapest place that we know we can buy pretty much anything. They pride themselves on low prices. That is their slogan. That is what they do. They want you to know that no, you're not going to find a cheaper price than at Walmart. That's always how they've been built. And Amazon, what do people know about Amazon as a brand? They know Customer service is 100%. You talk to anybody, anywhere, anytime about Amazon and they will tell you, yeah, I can pretty much send anything back I want to Amazon that I don't like. It's a trust factor. It's the fact that I know that if I buy this from Amazon and I don't like it, they'll take it back without really without questions asked. No, that's not I mean, from a seller perspective. That's not always the best thing because, you know, we that could be a whole nother episode. But the reality is that they have built brands on their customer service. It's not just about the products that they're offering and things like that. It really has to do with the user experience, the customer experience. Now, I don't love Walmart. To be honest, I go to Walmart sometimes. We don't here. We have Meyer, and Meyer is better to me than Walmart, so I don't go there. But occasionally, when I need to go to Walmart, I do go there because I'm looking for specific things they may not have at this store, that store, or whatever. It's not my favorite place, but they're definitely one of the places where if I just need something that's like, oh well, Walmart has that for cheap. That's usually why we go to Walmart because Walmart has that for cheap. I mean, a Rubbermaid container is a Rubbermaid container. And if you can get the Rubbermaid container from Walmart for $4 less than you can at Target, I'm going to Walmart. You know, that's the kind of stuff I'm talking about because those types of things are the same. And if this company has a cheaper price than this company, I'm going to go over there because the product is the same. Now, when the product changes, it's different. So you have to think about that. Okay. The, the other thing that makes bundles successful is adding value to the customer. So we talk about these value add items, right? You're talking about the canned, the lids for the can, canned cat food. We're talking about things that enhance the product or user experience a value add. Sometimes the value add item is the packaging. So here's an example. Think about your typical subscription box, right? Or your gift box. And um, my client, Catherine at Beat the Boredom Box. You can always check out her stuff. She has a whole brand, Beat the Boredom Box, um, and they're awesome. And I've actually used her bundles to give as gifts to other people because she does this so well, is that she takes wholesale products from, from multiple places, multiple vendors, and puts them in a box and sells it as a Beat the Boredom Box kit for senior citizens, for the sick, for the children, for anything. And in this Boredom Box, yes, she's curated this whole brand where she puts things in there, but that's the reality is that the value add item could simply be the branded packaging or like hangry kits. You guys heard me talk about hangry kits before. I love hangry kits. Why? Number one, I love food and snacks. Number two, I love variety. Number three, um, it all comes in a box and that snack box I can buy from Amazon, the hangry kit, and I can get it from Amazon and put it in my drawer in my office and no one gets to get my snacks. That's my snack box, right? Um, but their branding is on their packaging. Everything else inside of their packaging is bought wholesale from multiple companies and multiple brands. They have branded the concept. They have branded the packaging. And that packaging also uses doubles as a storage kit. So it's not just like I'm opening a box and throwing the box away and now I have all these random snacks. No, the box is actually where I store the snacks and keep them in my drawer. So when it comes to that kind of stuff, sometimes your custom packaging or like the gift, like the gift set, Mother's Day gift set. We just talked about those. The Mother's Day gift set, the box could be the branding that makes a difference. The box could be, okay, you, you have a wine glass, you have some socks, maybe there's a candle or maybe there's, um, you know, some essential oils or room spray or whatever it is that are in these Mother's Day kits. A lot of people have made those and great successful bundles making those. But in those kits, part of the branding, part of the experience and the value add is the packaging that it's in. So you can buy really nice box and packaging so that when you send this off to from New York to California to your grandma or your mom or your sister or your boss or whoever it is you're sending this cute gift to, that it's going to arrive as a gift. It's going to look nice. So the items inside of it might just be wholesale items you purchased that anybody else get their hands on. But what you brought to the table was custom packaging packaging and a design and layout that makes someone go, wow, this is a really nice gift that can be done with just packaging. So your value add, the value added item that you're adding to your bundle might be the brand that you create that curates these gift sets. But you have to think 
I love automation. I will tell you that right now. I love automation in business. When you can automate something, it makes it so much faster, so much easier, and you don't have to deal with, you know, manually doing everything. But let me tell you this though, the creation process and the research process for creating things cannot be automated. You can teach AI a lot of things. You can teach software and coding and AI to do artificial intelligence to do what I, most things. But even some of our software creating friends are in beta programs right now trying to write listings for, um, you know, they're still in beta because their AI can't quite think like you can think. You can teach it to think certain things, but you can't, it cannot Computers can't think like people can think still as much as they can come close. <laughs> Scribbles and some of these other listing enhancing things that go on out there with, with these things, they can actually semi write a listing for you, but you've got to be able to fill in the gaps. They can give you all the keywords in the world, but they can't think the way you can think. You have to do the work. They can't think like what would be best used with, um, you know, pasta <laughs> Well, yeah, you need a spoon and a pot or you need a microwave and a bowl to be able to cook that. Yes. But once you have one of those, you don't buy them all together every time. You don't go and buy a box of pasta roni and a pan and a spoon and a bowl every single time you buy it. No, they are assuming that their customers have utensils to to create to make the recipe. So they don't include that in there. But there's also like suggested, suggested servings of like add some chicken or add some uh, canned vegetables or add a seasoning packet or something like that. So you have to think. I almost want to say, I'm sorry you have to think. But guess what? This is not automated. There are many, many things in your business that I, number one, suggest and hopefully you do automate. You can automate things like emails. You can automate things like removal orders. You can automate things um, and have a VA do some things that are oh, semi-automated. You can use software to like Restock Pro or, you know, things like that that can kind of restock your inventory and, and things that are automated like your, your P&L reports from like Inventory Lab. I mean, automated. You don't have to sit there and painstakingly put all of those things in there, okay? But when it comes to bundle creation, choosing components, creating the who, what, when, where, why, and how of your bundle, that's the work that you have to put in to make it successful. That's the work that you have to do and then decide if this makes sense or it doesn't. And you have to think. It's not just about automation and does this make sense with this and do the numbers go together great is it's not about just hijackers and also the ai doesn't know the rules they don't know the rules of amazon they don't know that they're not going to be able to tell you that the bundle that you're trying to trying to create is going to give you a g10 exemption error code or it's going to give you um a restricted brand error code. There are some work you're going to have to do work. Oh my gosh, can you believe it? You're going to own a business. You're going to have to do work. If somebody hasn't told you that to your face yet, you're welcome because you just heard it here. This is work, people. It's not set it and forget it. This is not a, I'm going to sleep at night and make all this money. Yes, you will. You will make sales overnight that you don't have to fulfill and ship. And it's going to make money for you on your own eventually. But it doesn't happen right this moment. And it's not going to be automated. You're going to have to set your, up your systems and processes. You're going to learn how to do the proper research and do it right and do it correctly and do it for the right reasons. And when you do all of those things, just watch the money roll in. Just watch the bundle sell out and sell out again and sell out again. And you've created a whole new thing for someone that people love. That doesn't happen by accident. That happens on purpose. That happens with intentional step-by-step -step processes like in the Wholesale Bundle System Framework. So if you're doing it wrong, you actually have a chance to do it right. Because guess what? In this world, there is participation trophies and a lot of people say, oh, there's more than one way to do things. That's true. But there's also a correct and right way to do things. And not everybody's way is right and correct. Sometimes it's black hat and backdoor and against the rules and might work for a time, then might get you kicked off. Is that what you want? You want a temporary fix or do you want long term term sustainable income that you can repeat over and over again? That's what I'm here for. That's what I'm about. So I'm not going to sugarcoat it for you and say, oh, it's all going to be fine. You're going to make one hundred thousand dollars next month and it's all going to be great and sunshines and rainbows. No, it's going to be work, but it's going to be worth it. 
If you do it right and do it right the first time. I grew up with that kind of message in my life. My, that was some, one of the major things I learned from my dad. He said, do it right the first time. And then you don't have to go back and clean up a mess or redo it or do it a different way. Do it, find out how to do it right. Do it right the first time so that you don't waste a bunch of your time and anybody else's time. It's one of the best lessons I ever learned. So even if it takes a long time to learn it the right way, it will save you so much headache, so much money, so much stress and worry and wringing of the hands and losing a bunch of money trying to make a bunch of mistakes because you're in a rush. There is a right and correct way to do bundles. And you learn it in the wholesale bundle system. It is the most comprehensive system that's going to teach you all the way from the very beginning of how to set yourself up legitimately all the way to the end of not just creating a successful bundle, but how to manage your inventory, how to manage your processes, how to manage all that stuff, how to write your listing, how to use the softwares that help you do the best that you can do. So the choice is yours. You can struggle. You can literally drive the struggle bus up the mountain if you want. That's totally up to you. Or you can just kind of sink in and realize that maybe you've made some mistakes or you haven't even jumped into this bundle thing yet. It's going to be awesome. It's just going to take some time. It's going it, to, in the proper way to do things. No more black hat stuff. No more, um, you know, big, huge pipe dreams of quick, fast, easy. Because if they're promising all that, you better be weary. So mommyincome.com slash system. That gives you the whole wholesale bundle system. And if you want a repeatable, successful business model that's proven not just by myself, but all of the clients in years and years to come that are still maintaining success, even years after they've come to workshops, years after they've taken even the first wholesale bundles class. As a matter of fact, one of my original students is now teaching some bundles somewhere in the world. So we know that bundles work and they work when you do them correctly and you can do them successfully. But there is a right way and a wrong way. And there's a right motive and a wrong motive. So just ask yourself those questions. And if the answer is no, there's no shame. There's, I did this wrong the first time and now I'm going to make it right. Now I'm going to do things the right way and whether you want to see my successes. So mommyincome.com slash join us. Um, the code word is success. If you want to be in success and also to get the wholesale bundle system, mommyincome.com forward slash system. The wholesale bundle system is ready and waiting for you. It's always being updated with the latest and greatest information. I am still a wholesale bundle seller. That is how I make my primary income. So I'm in the trenches with you. I am not teaching from some random sideline when I don't know what's going on. Y'all, I have had 412 correspondence from Amazon in the past two weeks with, you know, dealing with the same problems and same issues that you guys are as well. So you don't, you're not hearing this from somebody who has no idea what you're going through, has no idea how to, how to deal with G10 exemptions and, and UPC codes and branding and brand registry versus brand approval and, you know, bundling and hijacking and all this kind of crazy stuff. I'm with you. And so just remember that. This, there is the right and wrong way to do things. And it bundles are so successful when you're thinking about your customer. So if you have bundles out there, at, go back and look at your bundles and just write that question down. Who, what, when, where, why, and how about this bundle and answer it. And if you can't, maybe it's time to revitalize that listing. Maybe it's time to uh, ditch that bundle and try something else if you can't answer those. So that's your kind of troubleshooting for the day. And if you've never done bundles before and you want to learn the right way, go to mommyincome.com slash system. Now, I know y'all could be anywhere else listening to any other thing at this time. I don't take that for granted. Thank you for being here. Thank you for listening to the Amazon Files podcast. If you have 20 seconds to leave me a quick review and subscribe to the podcast, subscribe to the YouTube channel, leave a comment, leave a review, that would be so tremendously helpful, not just for me, but for all the other people that have not discovered the Amazon Files podcast yet. You're helping them as well. So thank you for paying it forward. Subscribe, leave reviews, like, comment, and I will see you same time, same place next week on the Amazon Files.